Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Tuesday now, the 17th day of September 2024. On the update today, we're going to talk about this big signal that we are now seeing in all of the operational models, the ensembles of something developing in the Western Caribbean and potentially making its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Several days out, just a signal right now. It does not exist in reality. It's just numeric output on pretty maps and maybe even not so pretty maps depending on your point of view. But we need to talk about it. I'll show you what I know and maybe introduce you to a new concept here that you might not have known much about. All right, thanks for joining me. Good to have you. Let us get started. First in the Hurricane Center realm, not much happening. Our PTC-8 gone for the most part. Nothing over here now, but boy, yesterday, wow. In my neck of the woods down here in Southeast North Carolina, we got whipped. I'm telling you what, especially down there in Carolina Beach and Southport and Bald Head Island, parts of Brunswick County. There's areas down there where the roads are still closed. Just bad, bad, bad from a not even named storm. And you know what? It's just going to prove my point further that it is all about the impacts, not what us lowly human beings slap as a label on the weather. It's about the impacts, and the impacts were substantial. Notice, too, we don't have anything else out there right now. Gordon, the last advisory, was uh, written, and that will be the end of Gordon for this time around. We'll see Gordon again on the list in six years, unless it regenerates. You never know. Sometimes they do that, and it would still be Gordon if it did. And if we look at the seven-day tropical weather outlook, nothing on that, but I do believe we will see something introduced over here Either today, today might be a little bit early, maybe, it's hard to know, and no, I don't text or email people at the Hurricane Center and ask them these kinds of things. That's cheating. It is. That's, come on, I can't throw the game like that, and I know most of them quite well. I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying, but no, I don't do that. Um, I might ask them about storm surge advice when we're working operationally, but that's a different story. So we will see. We'll all find out together at about 2 p.m. this afternoon. Once this video is published, we'll know. But I do think it's coming. We're going to have to really watch this area down here in the coming days. And I will explain why as we continue our journey through today's update. So here's the satellite animation. Again, remarkable that during the peak time of the hurricane season, we have a dead tropical cyclone out here, Gordon. Uh, dry air just everywhere and it's not even Saharan air layer stuff uh, and strong upper level winds look at this thing just getting sheared off pulled apart like cotton candy nothing out here in the deep tropics so our attention and I've talked about this once we figured that the eastern Atlantic was going to be a bust that this was going to be the area to watch it does not take some kind of a genius to figure that out we generally know this based on climatology and the setup for this hurricane season. It is very favorable, just not over here. So where is it going to be favorable? Over here, more likely than not. What else do we have on the map? Well, this is the leftover energy associated with all that shenanigans yesterday. And uh, again, wow, what a reminder that rain is an impact and a substantial one at that. So let's move along. Let's take a look at my friend uh, Dylan here, and uh, this is what he was saying earlier. I don't know why it wasn't queued up, but whatever. Uh, we need to watch the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico for tropical trouble as the Central American gyre right there spins up next week. The CAG. It's pretty common to see later season storms come from it, and conditions look ripe for tropical development. The next name is Helene. We did not use Helene yesterday. And if we had, the next name would be Isaac, the dreaded eye storm, right? Uh, so this could be possibly the dreaded H storm. We'll have to see about that. But that's the Central American gyre, a nice little easy concept graphic there. But let's dig into it just a little bit more with our friends over at Fox Weather, all about the Central American gyre. I'm going to put a link to this, and you can even watch the video. But basically, and I like the little subtitle here, the Central American Gyre can aid in the development of tropical cyclones in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Eastern Pacific. 
In nearly each hurricane season, all of us, including the Fox Forecast Center, they monitor this stuff down there. In the Western Caribbean, when you get this large area of low pressure, back to Dylan's graphic, it's just a huge area of lower pressures, and the whole thing is rotating counterclockwise. It's a gyre, G-Y-R-E. And then in here, you get these lobes of vorticity that will pinch off. Maybe they interact with a tropical wave that's coming in, and then the whole thing gets set into motion. It is somewhat complex. It can take a while, but they can produce a lot of rainfall. The impacts, as noted here, extend outwards several hundred miles from where this big gyre or rotating area of low pressure is, and uh, sometimes they can lead to tropical cyclone development, and there's all kinds of good information in here for you to peruse and check out at your leisure. Uh, let's pull this up to full screen, and we can look at just a few past events here that might catch your eye. One notable, Michael, 2018, absolutely. So, you know, some of these have been problematic over time, and even Ida back in 2009, late season event, that came up, and I was actually down in Gulf Shores for that one. It made landfall going post-tropical, as they say, right as it did so. So we got to watch this Central American gyre. Again, I'll put a link to this in today's description so that you can read more about it. Educate yourself and learn about it. So what do the models show? Well, this is the GFS, and this is the operational as we call it. And this is that 850 millibar, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere layer that I have come to know and love so much. And this is the current setup. This is the analysis from this morning. There's that leftover energy from PTC 8, or whatever we want to call it, pain in the butt 8. And uh, yep, so what happens over time? Let's just move this out to 48 hours. 48 hours out, the wind is coming through the Caribbean here. You see these little flags. Uh, fairly straight from the east, east to west, right in the Central America, and then they kind of go out the other side, no problem. Another 24 hours into the future takes us to, yeah, still pretty much the same thing, but we're starting to see a little bit of a change over here. These wind barbs are going this way. There's just these subtle changes. We're starting to get the setup to this gyre, and the geography down here, the shape of the coast of uh, Central America helps to sort of get this thing going. Uh, you do have big mountains down here. It's all a very complex setup. And then watch again at 96 hours. Now we can start to see this thing defined better. Follow these little wind barbs here going like that. And then these are coming around this way. These are coming up through here. Hey, what does that look like? That looks a lot like that that Dylan had on his graphic over there, right? And they move around, they're different sizes. Some of them can just be enormous where they take up a huge area. It all depends. And you know, that part isn't figured out yet because it is just such a, uh, uh, an interesting phenomenon. No two Central American gyres are the same. But watch what happens when we get out to 120 hours. This is five days out. The gyre is fairly well established down here. You can clearly see that. And you got all these little yellows and oranges in here. That's that vorticity or the energy. And if we were out into the future, this is Sunday morning, you'd probably see a pretty large area of clouds and showers and thunderstorms down here. And by then, I would assume the National Hurricane Center might even have orange, you know, that medium chance of development, because it is starting to try to concentrate. That's day five. Finally, at day six, even more so but it is a process. You see, it doesn't just happen quickly. And what goes on to the north of it uh, determines a lot of how this shapes out. Because if there's not much ridging to the north, the energy can kind of get strung out, pulled into a trough, and the whole thing's just kind of sloppy. But when it is kind of jammed up down here by high pressure to the north, enough mid-level ridging, just enough, it sits here and it festers, as we say, and then look what happens finally by day seven. We start to see the makings of what could be trouble. It is definitely trying to concentrate itself now somewhere in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands. And we're going to have to really watch this very carefully. If we go and we look at the upper levels of the atmosphere, what does that look like? I like to look at all these clues. Oh, yeah. Like, are you serious? 
You look at that, that is perfect. Perfect upper level conditions, now at the 200 millibar level, and you even see a little low pressure there at the surface. Complete anticyclonic outflow at the top. Now we see we could have some problems down here. This is one week out. I'm not going to go beyond that. I know people post model runs going all out into the future, and you can see this yourself on tidbits and weather nerds or wherever else, and that is fine. In fact, hey, go ahead and do it. But what I want to do is just keep it within that seven-day window because that's where the National Hurricane Center um, tropical weather outlook, that's as far out as that extends. And honestly, a week out, that's far enough, right? So we see the ingredients there. Something could be brewing. It's late season. Now let's look at some of the things that could potentially lead more credence to this being feasible. All right, we've seen it in the modeling. What about the background state? Now this is where it does get concerning. I'll be very blunt with you. These anomalies down here, this is your five kilometer temperature anomalies. That's just the resolution of it. But it's that word right there, anomalies. This is what is so important. Your departures from the long-term average, one and two degrees Celsius warmer, all in here where this is going to develop. Also, one to two degrees Celsius, mainly one, uh, to be fair, down here in the eastern Gulf and even elsewhere in the Gulf. Don't want to single this out and start raising night. What does he mean? Why is he picking on the eastern Gulf? Bottom line, this whole region down here, we still have pretty exceptionally warm water temperatures relative to average. What about the actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf? Let's point out a couple of things. First, up here where Francine interacted with the Gulf, water temperatures have come down. But even these blues, don't let this throw you off. Look at the legend. That's still 28 Celsius, which is 82, 82 Fahrenheit. And then what is concerning, and I'll be you know straight up with you, we know something could be brewing. Yeah, these water temperatures in here in the eastern and central Gulf, all the way over to the west and southwest Gulf, still 30 Celsius plus. And then in and around Florida, 31 Celsius through the Straits, also 31 Celsius in and around the Cayman Islands and Cuba, Western Cuba, even 32C in there. Jeez. So very, very warm water temperatures, not only relative to average, but in reality as well. So yes, we do need to pay attention to this, no doubt about it, and just see how things unfold. Real quick, just wanted to point this out uh, along the East Coast and uh, Mid-Atlantic states. Interesting that the Gulf Stream really is very active right now. You got 29 and 30 Celsius just offshore, even though the shelf waters over here have cooled off to about 78, 79 Fahrenheit. So, you know, 25, 26 Celsius. Just offshore, still quite warm, and lots of ocean heat content there. So just keep that in mind as we progress through the next several weeks. That's all I'm saying. We just need to keep an eye on that because we have not cooled it off substantially just yet off the mid-Atlantic and east coast either. All right, so we do have a pretty big signal to watch. We shall do just that. And real quick, a huge welcome and a huge thank you to all of the new subscribers to our YouTube channel. It is great to have you. Some we picked up during our Francine work and some in just recent days, and I appreciate it. It's great to have you along with us. The subscription to the YouTube channel, of course, is effortless. You just do it. Hit that notification button if you want to be notified when we post videos, when we're live, and all sorts of other good stuff. So it's uh, great to have you. We appreciate it. The whole community grows because of your support. Just by subscribing to the channel, we love it. We're glad to have you. All right. Have a good rest of your Tuesday afternoon. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.